everyone. Today's devotional is taken from John chapter 5. Um, some of you may know it. It's the story where Jesus heals the lame man at the pool of Bethesda. Um, I'll start off with verse 2. So it says, Inside the city, near the sheep gate, was the pool of Bethesda with five covered porches. Crowds of sick people, those who were lame, blind or even paralysed, lay on these porches. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and he knew how long he had been ill, he said to him, would you like to get well? I can't, sir, the sick man said, but I have no one to put me in the pool when the waters stir. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. He picked up his sleeping mat and began to walk. Um, some of you may know, but me and my husband, we travelled to Jerusalem. We did a tour of Israel um, in February this year past, and we got to see the Pool of Bethesda, to where this miracle took place. Um, and when we were there, we were reading, obviously, the scriptures um, that surround the Pool of Bethesda. So we read this scripture out, um, and whenever we were reading it out, the this, the part that really stuck out to me was the fact that this man had been waiting for 38 years to be made well. Um, and so it reminded me actually of a vision that my mum had um, whenever, probably about two or three years ago now, she had a vision for me. Um, and it was, um, it was a vision of me and loads of other people and we were all in this classroom and the teacher was asking a question. Um, and we were all, you know, putting our hands up and I, I actually kept putting my hand up. I knew all the answers. I kept putting my hand up. I kept saying, you know, me, pick me, pick me. And the teacher never picked me. Um, she kept picking other people, all these people who didn't even know the answers. She didn't have their hands up. And she was picking these other people. And so it reminded me of the scripture because in that season of my life, it really impacted me in that season of my life. And um, I felt like God was never picking me. I felt like I kept presenting myself to God. I kept asking God to use me. I kept asking God to to do things in my life and create this um, life that he wanted for me. But I felt like he was holding out on me. I felt like he kept picking everyone else and everyone else seemed to kept getting blessed and everyone else was getting their healing, everything that everyone else was getting their promise. But it felt like God was holding out on me. Um, and I'm here this morning to tell you that that is so not true. Um, obviously it's not true um, and the reason why it's not true is because God does not hold out on us, God does not withhold anything from us. It says in scripture that he withholds no good or perfect thing from us. Um, so that is a promise that we can keep, that's a promise, um, it's who God is. Um, even I love the fact that even in this scripture, this was pre-cross, this was when Jesus was walking the earth, yes, but it was pre-cross, it was pre-salvation. And um, and even then it shows God's heart, it shows God's heart that he would actually, it says in other um, parts of the gospels, um, it talks different parts of the story and it says that an angel came down and stirred the waters and that whenever the next person who got into the water after the water was supernaturally stirred, that that person was made well. And so I love the fact that even even pre-cross, um, even pre um, the Holy Spirit was given like in abundance to everyone, pre all that, um, God's heart is still made manifest in the fact that he would even um, stir up a water and let healing happen and bring healing to people who needed healing. Um, and another thing as well about this passage is um, that really, really did that really struck my heart was the fact that this was not a faith issue. This was not the fact that the man had no faith that he couldn't be healed. It wasn't um, a problem with his faith. It wasn't a problem with um, the fact that he had no financial security. It wasn't anything to do. It wasn't the fact that he wasn't righteous enough. It wasn't the fact there was no other reason why this man couldn't get well other than the fact that he had no one to put him in the pool after the waters had been stirred. There was no one there for him. There was no one to pick him up and put him in the place where he needed to be to be healed. It wasn't the man's fault. Um, it was his circumstances. It wasn't It wasn't anything that he had done. He couldn't have done anything different. 
Um, it was the fact that literally he had no one to pick him up and no one to put him in the pool to be healed. And then Jesus comes along and Jesus doesn't even need the pool. Jesus just says, you're made well, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. And what I love about that as well is that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. He's the same in scripture as he is to us today. And so if he um, meets that man where he is after 38 years of waiting, if he meets that man where he is, then he can meet us where we need him today. And maybe um, for you, maybe it's not healing for you. Maybe you haven't been waiting all these years to be healed, but maybe... Um, you've been waiting for a financial blessing maybe you've been waiting for um, God to speak a calling into your life maybe you've been waiting for family members to see salvation maybe you've been waiting for um, a promotion and work like there's loads of other things that we have waited for in our lives that we find ourselves in this period of waiting there's loads of seasons in our lives that we find ourselves in that place and so for you today maybe it is um, maybe it is healing, maybe it's emotional healing, maybe it's supernatural healing of your body and you're um, in a place like that. But it could also be something that you're just waiting for, that you're seeking God for, that you've been interceding for and yet you don't see it happen. I want to encourage you today that even after 38 years, God fulfilled his promise. And it's the same today. God fulfills his promises. All his promises are yes. In Christ and amen through us the church and so today I stand with you today I will say yes and amen to every promise that God has over your life and over my life um, and we have to believe that we have to trust his heart when we can't trace his hand when we can't see where he is we have to trust his heart um, another cool thing about this passage is that the 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 um the name the pull of best says that actually means place of mercy or a place of grace, place of goodness. And so as we dwell on that today, um, God has obviously given us grace. He says his grace is sufficient for us. And so in that place of grace, are you meeting God there? Are you meeting God in your strife? Are you meeting God in all your, your interceding and all your trying to um, work up all these magical things that God then maybe will answer your prayer? God might heal me. God might... Um, release a blessing to me if I pray enough if I work enough if I do enough good deeds if I give enough money to the church if I serve him enough maybe God will um bless me but but that's not what the scripture is about the scripture talks about Bethesda which is the place of grace the place of mercy and so this morning I want to encourage you that God is not um up in the sky waiting for you to climb up this spiritual ladder to get to him he is right here, right now. He's waiting for us. He's um, waiting for us in that place of grace, not that place of strife, not that place where we work things up to get there to ourselves. He's, he's waiting for us in a place of grace where he has already conquered it, where he has already brought forgiveness, where he has already brought healing, where he has already brought everything that we need. Um, we find in him and we find it through grace. And so, yeah, I want to encourage you but with that this morning that we would um, be a people that we would find that place of grace that we would find that place of mercy and that we would see God's goodness in the land of the living and um, let me pray with you this morning and um, God we just thank you Lord Jesus that you pour out grace on our lives Lord thank you that there is rivers of grace Lord thank you that um, you have poured out grace on us Lord thank you that there is no place to escape there's no place to go other than um the grace that you have for us lord and we just thank you for the cross lord we thank you for what you've done we thank you that um grace is ours that your grace is sufficient for us lord jesus we thank you that we don't have to climb up um some sort of spiritual ladder to get to you lord we thank you that we don't have to work up our good deeds or act in a certain way lord for you to hear our prayers but lord that you are gracious to us god that through your son jesus christ god that we have been made right in your sight lord that you um pour out your grace on us god and that mercy is ours lord we thank you for um healing today we thank you for healing in our body god we thank you for healing in our mind we thank you for healing Lord Jesus, in all those places where we seem to be waiting and where 
it seems like you're not answering it seems like you're giving other people all the blessing god we we ask for mercy in those places god we ask for grace in those places lord grace that would empower us grace that would strengthen us god grace that would cover faults god that we have lord jesus and we thank you for that we thank you that you so freely give lord jesus we thank you that um you don't withhold things from us lord we trust you this morning we say that our lives are in your hands this morning and we trust you so lord jesus today I just pray for everyone who is listening god i pray today that they would find that place of grace i fit Pray today, God, that they would find that place of mercy, Lord, where they meet with you, where they speak with you, God, where they listen to you, Lord, and where you minister to them and bring them to a place of goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day. Thank you for listening.